All right, Lord, where's Apollos? Okay, because I did my part. Holy Ghost, you're up. <laughs> I did my part. You're enjoying the food. You're enjoying the laughter, the memories. Everything is great. And then somebody, the big wooden spoon of the family, brings up politics and religion. Ladies, it happens all the time. And so I'm going to share with you a few ways that we can approach those awkward family conversations and yet not compromise our witness for Jesus or the relationship we have with our loved ones. So stay tuned. And the giveaway prize winner for this month is... Hey lady, welcome or welcome back to your new favorite talk show for Christian women, Grown Lady Chat. I'm your host, Dr. Sharonda Simone. If it's your first time tuning in, welcome. I am so happy you are here. Be sure to smash that like button and spam the comment section because every time you engage in the GLC community, that's another opportunity for you to be entered into the random monthly giveaways. And in today's episode, I will be announcing our next monthly giveaway winner. So make sure that you watch all through because you just might be the winner. If you are a giveaway prize winner, you could get a gift card, home decor items, makeup, skincare, or beauty products, faith-based resources, or personal development tools. So ladies, it really pays for you to be engaged in the GLC community. And remember, I do have a thriving email community as well. So go ahead and tap in. There is an active link in the description box for you. It is absolutely free to join the GLC email community. Hey lady. Are you a woman who loves the Lord and who also enjoys beautiful things? Well, if you are, then you are personally invited to join my exclusive Christian women's group. In this group, we chat about clothes, beauty, home decor, parenting, marriage, cooking, and of course, our Christian walk. It's Christian lifestyle all encompassing. So be sure to join by clicking the link below. I hope to chat with you soon. Now back to our show. You and your family members might not always see eye to eye when it comes to your Christ walk, when it comes to politics, and it can get heated. Mm -hmm. Yes, ladies, but we are not going to be lukewarm for Christ. Absolutely not. But we also don't want to go around throwing daggers and ruining relationships with family members. But sometimes it happens. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes it's not your fault. Okay. But today I did want to share about 10 things that we can do to just be a good witness and to actually plant good seeds among our family members, even in those awkward conversations and even when we don't agree. Are you a woman who enjoys beautiful things? 34.5 Lifestyle has lovely, unique accessories for your everyday look and also for those special occasions. Click the link below to check out our latest accessory collection. All right, see ladies, this is a two-part series. So part one is going to be five and part two is going to be five. I just want to start off by saying our litmus test, our starting point is the objective word of God. That is our foundation and truth, all right? So before we even, you know, delve into the conversation, we just have to come to that same expectation that however we're going to approach these awkward, you know, circumstances and these, these chats with our family members, that we're going to come from the word of God, all right? And that's the first thing, ladies. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to approach everything with biblical truth, not opinions. It's really easy for us to get pulled into emotional conversations that have nothing to do with the word of God, that have nothing to do with what is right from wrong. It is very common right now for everyone to have my truth, your truth, their truth, everybody have a truth. There is only one truth, okay? And that is the word of God, especially when it comes to what we see happening now in popular culture, what we see happening now in politics. Those two are not separate, okay? Your Christ walk and your politics, those go hand in hand because we're supposed to honor God with our vote, honor God with our service in the community, right? So those two actually go hand in hand. I know sometimes it's really touchy and awkward, but ladies, mm -mm, we can't separate that because when we stand before God uh, at the end of time, he's not going to say, okay, well, I understand you had that political affiliation, so I'm going to give you a pass for that. 
uh, but how else did you serve me? Mm -mm. No, he's looking at our work in totality. So let's make sure that we're honoring God with our political views, even if there is not one specific candidate that we can stand behind 100%. Let's make sure that when we're approaching conversations, when we're approaching politics, it is from a place of what is the best choice as a Christ follower. I tend not to be that person who starts those conversations among my family and friends only because it's not, I haven't found that it is a, a good time to bring up controversial topics, right? Everybody is in a good mood. Everybody is, you know, trying just to make positive memories. And sometimes those conversations can be awkward, ugly, negative, family splitting in nature. But if you are like me in your family, there is somebody who is inevitably going to bring up the conversations, right? And so what I like to say is, you know what? Ask Holy Spirit for wisdom. Not every conversation should you hop into. I'm not saying you shy away from them because if you know me, you know that I don't shy away from a situation. I don't shy away from confrontation. Um, you know, having opposing opinions doesn't bother me. It is, however, wisdom that I have to follow because not every situation, not every conversation is an opportunity for me to speak certain things. We have to ask Holy Spirit to guide us and also show us opportunities. Maybe you are sitting across the table from one of your cousins and you know that he or she is making poor decisions. You see where they are investing their life into satanic things. I mean, there's no bones about it. You know they're going down the wrong path. Lady, I'm not saying that you sit there and condone and say, oh, that's wonderful, great, because that's not truthful. That's not what Christ would do. Christ, instead, we see in many times in the Bible where, yes, he sat among sinners all the time because he was the only one who was not sinful. So anybody that God or Jesus was around when he was here on earth, he was around sinful people. But he didn't always just go around just shooting shots. OK, he was blunt. He was to the point, but he did it out of love and he waited for the right opportunity. So, ladies, let's ask Holy Spirit to guide us with wisdom to show us, OK, should I say something now? How should I approach this conversation? Lord, open the doors for me to be able to speak your truth in love to this family member or in this conversation. Sometimes it might be a private moment that he presents. Other times it might be, you know, a, a very um, public moment that is presented but let's go into these family situations with wisdom that only holy spirit can provide because let me tell you there are certain people in your life in your orbit they are going to only hear the truth from you or they will only listen i should say to the truth from you they might have heard the truth from somebody else they might have read it they might have heard it spoken from a pulpit but they might only listen to it when it comes from you. So don't shy away from these conversations. Instead, use wisdom from Holy Spirit so that you know when and how to approach the conversations. In the same vein, when you're having your conversations, those you know real touchy, uh, high point conversations with your friends and family members, especially over the holidays, make sure that you're coming from biblical truth. That is your best defense, should I say, but that is your best position and that is the only perspective that matters. Let's get rid of the opinions, let's get rid of the subjective truths, and let's focus on the objective truth of God. In 1 Corinthians 3 verses 6 through 8, we read, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. Ladies, you are not responsible for changing anyone's heart. You are not responsible for the burden of making someone come to Jesus. You are simply like Paul was in Corinthians. You are one who might plant the seed of truth. Even in these awkward family conversations, you might just plant it and then maybe a pastor or a best friend comes and they water it. But ultimately, it is God who does the pulling. Holy Spirit does the pulling of the heart and God is the one who actually makes that seed planted grow. 
Now, like the Bible tells us, the one who plants and the one who waters, yeah, we all have one goal. We all have one purpose, the Great Commission. Spread the good news. Tell the gospel. Each person will be rewarded for their own labor. So, yes, we're supposed to tell as many people as Holy Spirit has placed in our path. That's why I don't want for you to shy away from those conversations. They're going to be hard. They might be uncomfortable. People might look at you crazy like, mm, yeah, she really thinks that she's, you know, somebody special with her self-righteousness. No, 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 no. You're not going in with your own self-righteousness. There are multiple Bible verses that tell us that we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. All right, so Romans 3.22, Romans 3.21 through 26, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. Ladies, we have to know the word of God, okay? Because Satan is out there trying to run circles of deceit around us. But don't take that burden of responsibility of trying to change someone's heart. You'll be frustrated with your other person, they'll become frustrated with you. You'll take on guilt that you have no business handling, okay? And you'll also try and take the glory when it does happen. All right, ladies, have you signed up for the 2025 GLC Reset and Renew Retreat? It's happening in Thomasville, Georgia, January 11. So that means the surrounding areas. Ladies, you need to tap into this, okay? It's going to be an awesome experience where we talk about mind, body, and spirit reset and renewal. I don't want for you to miss it, okay? So there is a live link down below for you to register. There is an early bird discount that is happening right now, but it won't be happening for much longer. And I I don't want for you to miss out on the opportunity to save money. So make sure that you click the link and invite a friend. And what's really neat about the Reset and Renew Retreat that's happening in January is that I have built into the schedule self-care moments. So when I say we're going to be doing mind, body, and spirit reset and renewal, it's going to be, of course, in the Lord, absolutely, but you'll also walk away with a physical renewal. It's going to have little spa moments throughout. Trust me, you haven't experienced anything like this before. The Bible tells us that we are not fighting against humans when we are speaking the word of God. We are not fighting against mere flesh and blood. Ladies, there is an adversary, Satan, and he hates us. He hates you. He hates me. He hates what we stand for. And therefore, we cannot take these awkward conversations and whatever might spew out of the mouth of your family members. You can't take it personally. Okay, they're not attacking you. I know it might feel like that. I know, I know it might make your skin crawl because you're like, ah, I wish you could see the truth. But ladies, it's not against you. It's the spirit of God in you that makes Satan upset. Now, I'm not saying your family members are demon possessed or demon oppressed. However, there might be certain thought processes. There might be certain mindset. There might be certain lifestyle ch choices that they've made that are in direct opposition to the word of God, even if they love the Lord. So please don't take it personally. As much as they're looking at you and they're pointing at you and they're giving reference to you and your life and maybe the mistakes you made before you knew better, it's not about you. In the Bible, we see where Jesus himself was rejected in his own town. He was rejected by the religious leaders. He was rejected by his own people. And so if Jesus himself, perfect son of God, was rejected with all of the truth that he spoke because he only spoke truth, even in his regular casual conversation. If he was rejected and if he was spoken ill of and people spewed hatred toward him and wanted him dead, literally wanted him dead and made sure it happened, ladies, what more for you and I? Don't take it personally. I know it feels like it's you. I know they're saying things about you and your family and how, you know, silly they think you are and how could you? Mm -mm. It's not personally. Don't take it that way. Remember the word of God tells you that when you are speaking truth, you're going to be hated, persecuted, you know, set aside. People don't want to deal with you. And we see that happening right now. Christians, Christ followers who are submitted to Jesus, not perfect, okay, but submitted to Jesus, they're being uh, persecuted. We're being ostracized 
in many situations. It might not be as overt and obvious here in the US as it is in other countries, but it's still happening. And sometimes it's, it's obvious, right? But more so we see where it's just, you know, people don't want to hear the God thing. They don't want to talk about God. They would rather talk about every other religion, but not Christianity. They have a problem with it. It makes them uncomfortable. It, it makes you seem as though you're, you're hating, you're not receptive. They don't talk that way about other cultures. There is an anti-Christ movement. There's an anti-God, capital G, movement happening in the world. And you're not exempt from it, but we just cannot take it personally because it's not about you. Your witness for Christ is not about you. Which leads me to the next point. This next one might be a bit controversial. However, the word of God says it and therefore you have permission to walk away. Ladies, yes, in Titus 3 verse 10, Hmm, that makes sense. I'm going to share it with the ladies. I was doing a Bible study on Titus and the messages that were being shared about how to act even in a setting where you're around other Christ followers and maybe there are some issues in the church, you know, among the body of Christ. I was like, oh yeah, Titus? Mm-hmm, yes, yes. And again, I believe this is also Paul writing to Titus, okay? And he was telling him how to conduct himself in the church and how other church members should be acting. Ladies, let's get into it. So the NIV reads in Titus 3 verse 10, warn a divisive person once and then warn them a second time. After that, have nothing to do with them. Ladies, let me tell you, this is freeing, okay? This should be freedom for many of us because it is so easy for us to want to browbeat people into the truth. It doesn't work that way. My grandmother, before she passed away, at the wonderful age of 105 years old, my grandmother used to always say, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. We're not going to browbeat people into loving God. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. And if someone, a lovely family member, but you know this family member who can be lovely at times is also causing division in your family, at these family situations, right? There's always that one auntie or uncle or cousin or sibling. There's always that one. Let me tell you something. You have permission to have nothing to do with them. If you've given one warning, you've given two warnings, you've given opportunities, ladies, you can walk away. And it doesn't have to be literal, okay? You don't want to be rude and just be like, oh, about face and leave them in the middle of a conversation. Although sometimes that might be necessary. However, you need to figuratively let it go, okay? Because some people are just bent, according to the word of God, some people are just bent on not listening. And they're sitting in the church pulpit. They're sitting in the pew beside you, okay? They are not wanting to listen to the truth of God because maybe pop culture and maybe they're concerned for, you know, losing money or maybe they're concerned for losing popularity or friends or subscribers, whatever. They're so hung up on their worldly desires. They've been so deceived. Unfortunately, deception is real. And when you're being deceived, it's hard for you to see the truth from all the lies. Everybody else around you can see it on the outside, but sometimes it's hard for you to see what's happening when you're the one being deceived. So that's the same thing with your family members, even the ones who go to church. Yeah, uh-huh. The ones who are on the deacon board, uh-huh. The deaconess board, yeah. Yeah, sometimes there's deception. We've all been deceived. Have you been deceived? Okay, so it's not like we're sitting here high and mighty, but for the grace of God, we would still be in that deception or we would still be deceived, right? Remember, we're still using Holy Spirit as our guide for wisdom. So this is more of a guidance, not a hard and fast, but a guidance that don't allow yourself to be pulled in to a, an argument with someone who has just decided that they're going to be divisive, that they're going to just stay in their deception, that they're going to cause trouble and friction, and they're just going to be rebel roses. Hey, you know, you say your piece and you, you just have to let it go. Because remember, you're planting a seed. That might be the seed you, you've planted, especially if when you're talking to someone and you're sharing the truth and you can see that it hit a nerve, you've planted a seed. The seed might be, you know, it might want to be pushed up. They don't want it to settle. They don't want to hear it, but you've planted a seed because you've touched a nerve. You've done your part. You can walk away and say, all right, Lord, 
Where's Apollos? Okay, because I did my part. Holy Ghost, you're up. <laughs> I did my part. And the giveaway prize winner for this month is... Congratulations and thank you so very much for being an active member of the GLC community. All right, you ladies, if you're enjoying, don't forget to smash the like button and register for the retreat happening in January. There is also an online streaming option. Yes. So if you are long distance, you're not in the, you know, Southern Georgia area, you can still tap in. Be sure to tune in next Monday for the other five ways that we can approach these conversations. Trust me, I'm looking at this list. Ladies, you're not going to want to miss it. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you do so. And then also add your bell notifications. That way, every time I upload new content, you get alerted. There's a lot of chaos happening right now on the interwebs. I don't want for you to miss the good stuff. All right, you ladies, that is it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comment section. There are new episodes of GLC airing every Monday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And remember, on Thursdays, ladies, we go live, all right? So it's a chance for us to talk in real time. So until next time, remember, I am Dr. Sharonda Simone, and I will either see you at the top or from the top. You decide. Bye.